Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I am bringing you um, one of our last couple of layouts for the um, 12 days of Christmas layouts. And this is a fun one I'm super excited about because I have, um, I, I immediately thought of this when I saw this particular um, item come up in the CM blog. This is a design that that is the original um, idea of a fantastic CM independent advisor and designer, and her name is Sachio Omitsu. Um, I love her design; she's so sweet, and um, and her designs are super cute. Um, but when I saw this, I thought immediately that it would make a darling Christmas page, like a Christmas cottage kind of feel. Um, that's the vibe that it gave me anyway when I. To, to borrow a word for my 17 year old, the vibe. <laughs> she thinks that it's so funny. Their generation thinks that's original, but I'm pretty sure that word originated several decades back. Anyways, um, I digress. So today we're going to create not just this page, but we're gonna do a two page layout using this as our inspiration. And I'm going to share with you how to um, come up with that. I have on my desktop here, I have my permanent and my repositionable adhesive. And I also have two sheets of our dark green cardstock. That's going to be our base, but we're going to gut that so that we save some of that um, cardstock to use other places. Um, I have our, the, the two sheets of light, like Christmas light paper that were in our uh, seasonal sightings designer pack and um, and this sheet right here with the red stripes was also in that pack I believe or it, it I don't know my packs have gotten all mixed up guys so I'm not sure actually if I'm remembering that correctly let me double check it and see nope actually that striped one I think may have been from either the tone on tone or um, or the um, additional pack of papers. But anyway, um, then we also have this one right here, which I know for sure was in the tone on tone pack that has just sort of the, the sweatery fleck in it. And then um, a piece of this wood grained paper. Um, so we're gonna use uh, portions of all of that for these layouts, this two page layout. And then I also have a couple of mats down here we're going to use and some of the laser embellishments that we're going to use. And um, several, you know, options of different things you could use other than these items. So as we get there, we'll discuss um, some other ideas. Hopefully, I'll remember to discuss those. I, I would like to anyway. Um, so hopefully that will come across as we get to those places. For now, I'm going to just clear a couple of things off of my immediate workspace so we can get started. And we're going to start with our cardstock. We're going to start by um, what I call gutting our cardstock, which just means that we are going to take the center out of our 12 inch square. And you do that by using your 12 inch trimmer and setting it up in such a way that you are able to quickly cut the middle out of it. So what that means is we only want about one inch, a one inch square all the way around, oh not in one inch square, but a one inch frame all the way around um, the outside and we want it to be a continuous piece. We don't want to have to piece it together. I'm going to put this little alligator clip on my um, on my trimmer bar at the 12 inch mark right here. I don't know if you can see that but if you have a CM trimmer, let me focus that. You can see that there is a measurement bar that goes all along the route of your trimmer, your blade housing. So I just set my alligator clip right at 12 inches right here. And that's going to allow my blade to stop at 11 inches because my blade stops at, that, at this white mark right here. 
Okay, so as my blade housing comes down, it's going to stop the blade at 11 inches, which is what I want. I don't want it to, um, to cut beyond that. And I could be really fussy about it and, um, and make that happen, but I'm, I'm just not that fussy. I don't want to pay that close attention. I want to be able to do this quickly. So I'm going to put my paper at the one inch mark right here. And I'm going to start my cut at the one inch mark right here. And I can see based on where that white mark is on the side of my blade housing, I can see where the cut's gonna start. I'm gonna start right at the beginning of the grid, that's one inch. And so each time I start cutting, I'm gonna start right there. And I'm only gonna go down as far as my clip allows me to. Then I'm going to turn my paper. Doesn't matter which direction you prefer to do this. You can do it any direction you are comfortable. And I'm going to just keep turning until I've completed the square. I can't really see where that cut is, but I think that's about right. If you overshoot it and you end up with a crosshatch, you know, cuts at a corner, that is okay because it's all going to be covered up. We are only going to see the very edge all the way around this. So there's one and we can set this piece aside to use on another layout sometime. Or make mats with or whatever. So we're going to do this twice because we want one for each page. So really the first one is the one that you have to be the most careful about because you can't necessarily tell on this side where to cut. I hope that you guys are ready for Christmas. This video I'm going to try to get edited and up before Christmas so that you have it. Even though it's already Thursday as I'm recording this. So hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe it'll be our Christmas Eve video. Who knows? All right. So I've got my two frames like so. Now what I need is to grab my light paper and my stripe paper. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of um, kind of fudging with this. And the reason is because when I went to pull out my stripe paper, as you can see, I had a full page and I have a page minus an inch and seven eighths or so. And I, I really need the full 12 inches all the way across, so I'm going to have to do some piecing together. But I think this is still going to work. So what I want to do is I want, to, I want you to take this striped paper and with the lines vertical within your printer, your, or your, not your printer, your trimmer, you're going to cut 4 inches. And Oop, I need to take that off. We don't need that anymore. We need to cut all the way through. Okay, so I need four inches and then I need another four inches. There we go. And we'll set this piece aside. And then we are going to take this paper and we're going to cut four inches off of our lights. So if you have two pages of light paper, the light strings, then you'll be, you won't have to do what I'm doing, but um, you can, you can still, you should do what I'm doing right here. But in a minute, I'm going to have to piece some things together, and you won't want to do that. Okay, so you need four inches off of this. Make sure your strings are um, 
perpendicular to your trimmer so that you're cutting along with the strings and not across the strings. Okay, we need the bigger piece of this. We're gonna set this piece aside for a second. I'm gonna grab it again in just a minute, but for right now, we're going to just set it aside. Then you're gonna take your other piece. If you have a full piece, that's fantastic. Just cut four inches off of it, just like we did the other one. And if you, um, if you don't, if you're like me and you don't have a full 12 inch wide piece, then what you're going to need to do, and I'm just gonna double check my measurements very quickly before I, I'll just do like so, before I get too far along here. So I've got 10 and a quarter inches and I need a full 12 inches. So I need an inch and three quarters. And I need two, two pieces that are an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to come back in here and cut another two pieces that are an inch and three quarters. And we're going to see, I'm hoping that they'll all line up and, and or they'll line up close enough that it won't be super noticeable. All right. So those are going to go with that. Okay. Now what we need are some pieces to weld with. So grab your, grab a piece of scrap card stock that you've got and just cut two one inch pieces that you can use to weld. So there's our two one inch pieces. Sticking that one that piece back in my stock. Okay, so setting my trimmer aside just for a second, just long enough so we can get these pieces welded together. Then we're gonna need the trimmer again, so don't put it too far away, okay? So just for the sake of, of simplicity, I'm gonna avoid the one with the extra little smaller pieces, and we're gonna go with just taking care of this one first. And I'm going to flip this over. If you haven't seen the way that I weld paper together, well, I'm gonna show you right now. So this is the back side of the two pieces we need. And I'm gonna just lay them out here in the position that I need to weld them. I'm gonna grab my permanent adhesive, put several pieces on the diagonal because I feel like it holds better but then we're going to glue this down anyway, so you can put it on there however you like, but it doesn't have to be right along the seam. It can be just across the seam. And then you're going to take your piece of cardstock, line it up at the bottom so that it's right along the edge, and so that the crack is halfway in between. Can you see that? Hopefully that's easy to notice and then you just push it down right onto the adhesive and you have welded those two pieces together. Obviously my cardstock is a little bit beyond my um, designer paper, but that's okay because we are actually gonna trim the edge of this. So no worries there, okay? So that is the end goal for these. Let's see what we can do to put this together so that it will make sense. Okay, let's see. Ah, my lines are off. Which means they're gonna be off up here too. They are. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm not gonna worry about it too terribly much. I think that seam is going to be covered in most places, so I'm not going to worry about it. I want to be able to see it on the edge, so it'll be okay if it's not covered. Should we 
flip that over. I think I will fl I'll flip it over. Okay. Oh, that's closer. Look at that. It's almost, almost perfect just by flipping it over. So maybe I got them all turned upside down. There. Oh, perfect. Okay. Nice. Well, it's not exactly, exactly, but it's close enough. All right. So let's flip this over like so. just going to get some adhesive on there to kind of help it stay where I need it to stay. Then I'm going to take this top one and flip it over. We probably ought to weld these pieces as well. Let's, we're going to go ahead and put this down. Weld that together. Then I'm going to get another scrap of paper that I just have kind of hanging out over here. Give me a second. I got a lot of paper just hanging out over here. But let's see. Let's. Let me make sure that that's right. Yeah. Okay, so just like this. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close. And, you know, since I didn't have a perfect piece of paper that I was starting with. Close is as much as I could hope for, so it's all good, right? Okay, this piece of paper is not long enough. Oh, I'm sorry guys, hang on a second here. This piece will work right here. So we're just going to reinforce that a bit. And reinforce this part a bit and then we are good and we'll just trim those off. No one will be the wiser. All right now what we're going to do is we're going to trim these pages down actually so let's This is going to, no, actually that'll be just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our trimmer and now we need to turn it, turn these two, our light and stripe squares into 11 and three quarter inch squares. So not 12 by 12, but 11 and three quarters, okay? So I'm going to just cut a quarter of an inch off of the end of this one which is why I said it didn't really matter that that one little bit was over. Okay, so quarter of an inch on this trimmer is the very edge of your mat strip. That's a quarter of an inch. All right, so there's those little bits. Then I'm going to turn the bottom and trim the bottom off since I have that little discrepancy there. So We'll go with an inch and a, or a quarter inch across the bottom. Paper buckled just a little. There we go. And it looks like I wasn't putting enough pressure. So we'll try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so there's one. I don't know why but that just that didn't cut it quite because I had to go back and cut it again. It wasn't quite as oh, it was accurate. It just was hanging on there by some little tiny bit. Okay. Now we're gonna do this one. I'm gonna just trim this side since I have that little bit of 
cardstock hanging off the side. So when you when you are trimming to these things down to make a new size square, you just have to remember to cut it the same way unless you're using one piece of paper. If you're using one piece of paper, it's not as big a deal, but when you are because I have two different patterns, I need to make sure that the patterns remain the same. So I cut it from the bottom and I cut it from the side. All right, so those should be exactly the same. And we're gonna just remove this stuff and get it out of the way. Okay, so now we have each of our bases and these are going to go be mounted on these frames so we're just going to use our permanent adhesive and go around the outer edge make sure if you do what I just did, where you get your adhesive a little off the edge, that you go back and fold it under so that it's not as noticeable. You don't have it sticking out the side. There we go. Okay. All right. And this is just barely going to have a frame around the outside, only about an eighth of an inch around the outer edge. For some reason, I have a tiny bit of cardstock, welding cardstock, still showing over here. So I'm just gonna cut that so that we don't have that. All right. So about an eighth of an inch, all the way around, maybe just shy of an eighth of an inch, depending on how true to size your cardstock is. So you just want the hint of a frame around the very outer edge, okay? So make sure that that's all stuck down really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and do this side. If you don't want to do two different pieces of paper, you don't have to. Just take one 12 by 12 sheet and cut it into an 11 and 3 quarter inch square. For one side and then do the same thing for the other. Make sure they match. So use the same 12 by 12 sheet and just cut it into an 11 and 3 quarter inch square. All right, so there we've got why you almost can't even see the one with the seam, which is this one right here. Anyway, okay, so these are going to be our two bases. Now what we're going to do is set that aside just for a second. I'm going to grab my, um, this flecky paper right here, and we're going to cut some mats really quickly. And I'm just going to refresh my memory to make sure I'm cutting these correct. So we need five or ten actually because we're doing two pages um, three and a half by three and a half squares so I may need another of these papers so let me just pull another one out in order to do ten of these we are going to need more okay so when we get there I will grab that all right, so three and a half by three and a half inch square. So, I'm just gonna do a three and a half inch strip and another three and a half inch strip and another three and a half inch strip. set this piece aside 
for another layout. Then you're going to just stack these. And then come back in here and put that again at three and a half inches. Push real hard so you can make sure you're going through all three sheets. And there's three. And this will do three more. And then we'll do three more and then we'll just have one more we need to cut because we need ten. Okay. So those little bits, these little bits are extra. Just set those aside. Alright, so now we've got nine. We need one more three and a half by three and a half. So I'm actually and let's see. I think I'm going to, since I have a, have a little bit cut off of this piece already, I'm going to cut this right here, three and a half. And then we're going to turn that and cut it again at three and a half. Okay. So there's our nine mat or ten mats. Sorry about that. Ten mats. And then we also need we may need this again for another mat, but I'm gonna set that aside just to, just in case I want to use it. But um now I'm not really certain I'm going to want to. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, take this wood paper right here and we're going to cut this into half inch strips. I need eight, so eight pieces of half inch strips is what it says. So let's try let's just cut eight half inch strips and see if that's what she means. I think that's what she means. But we will find out. We need eight, it says. We actually might need more than eight for what we're going to do with this. So if you have a full sheet of wood paper that you are working with, just keep it handy because we might need some more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more, and we'll have eight, and then we'll see how far this gets us. Okay, setting that aside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our wood paper and we're going to roll it. Alright, so I know that might seem kind of bizarre, but just imagine Sachi's mind is pretty awesome in its creativity. I would never think to roll my paper, but she says we need to roll it, so I'm going to try to roll it. We're trying to make it look a little bit like a stick, so it doesn't have to be super precise. We are simply trying to give it some a, a new type of definition I guess would be my guess 
this is where fingernails may come in and may be helpful for ya. Okay, actually I'm gonna turn it over and kind of bend it up like I had bent the other side. Let's see if that makes this process a little easier. tuck those pieces together. So this is definitely a fiddly process. If you are not a fiddly person, you could just cut like a quarter inch strip and call it good. <laughs> I am I am not, like, if you've been watching my channel, you've heard me talk about how I am not really a paper art person, but some people are super talented in coming up with great things this way, so I like to try. If you are like me and you like to try and just see if you can make it work, see if you can make it work. Look at that, that looks kind of cool. So basically I'm just taking my half an inch and I'm folding up the very edge and on both sides and then I'm tucking one edge under the other one to create kind of a roll. I hope you can kind of see that. So we are going to be using precision, precision, <laughs> precision point adhesive to adhere this to our page. And it looks like I did not grab mine and it is not where it normally is. So bear with me a second. I'm going to go get it. Okay. So precision point adhesive, if you've not used this before, it can get a little bit messy. So just try to be patient with it and with yourself. You just sort of touch it to your paper and squeeze. This area right here is soft, so you can kind of squeeze that together. And then the glue comes out the tip down here. And it is a glue. And it will hold a lot. So just every inch or inch and a half, every so often, we're just going to place a little dot of adhesive. I think I got a little too much there, actually. So I'm going to kind of spread that out. Otherwise, it doesn't dry as quickly if, you, if it's in a big blob, right? Come on. There we go. So I can tell that this process is going to take a few minutes. And what I will do is just go ahead and speed up the video so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do all of this. You can watch it fast. Alright, 
but this is what we need to do to all eight pieces of paper. When I'm done with all eight pieces of paper, we'll figure out if we need more and to do what we need to do on, the, on our layout, okay? So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so this is the last one of the eight strips that we cut, and um, I have learned that if I just run my fingernail across, if I take the strip and kind of lean it and then run my fingernail across and kind of give it a little bit of a crease, that that is what, what it needs to kind of encourage it to curl or to fold in on itself so that's what I do each time I'm just running just kind of creasing it so that it gives it that kind of curved shape already and then I can come back and fold over the inside or the you know each each of the long edges I can fold in on themselves and then go back and glue it down. So yes, this is probably the most tedious part of this entire layout, but hopefully it will look neat in the long run. I'm sh the uh, photos of Sachi's finished product look really cool, so hopefully mine will turn out looking cool too. We'll see. Hopefully yours turns out looking cool. Okay, so just going to glue it down now. And rather than putting dots of glue, I'm actually, I have found that just, you know, putting a small bead of, of the adhesive all along the edge really is more productive. It's easier. Um, on you as you're trying to get the adhesive on there and then I'm also finding that my workspace is getting sticky so you'll probably want to do this on top of a separate mat rather than your workspace mat because I am going to have to get some alcohol and clean this off okay so there's my eight um, pieces of timber to frame my windows. Okay, so let me set this aside. I'm going to keep my precision point adhesive out and we're going to just lay this out and then go ahead and put our, add our um, mats. So sorry, just adjusting my instructions so I can see uh, see the picture a little bit better so you're gonna have three mats across the top which is I'm using the striped area as my top kind of as if it's the roof of the cottage and then you're gonna have two mats down the outer side I'm making sure that I'm using my piece, my um, one that has the seam on the outside so it's a lot less noticeable. And you can hardly see it actually. 
All right, you're gonna end up with about three eighths of an inch between each one of these mats. So, um, probably more like a quarter of an inch after you take the edge, if you're not counting the edge and you're only measuring from the um, designer paper, it's more like a quarter of an inch. So go ahead and um, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere my mats. I'm going to do the ones in the corner first and then the ones in the middle so I can center the ones in the middle and make sure that all of my um, borders around it are e as even as possible. So this one is way more than a quarter of an inch between these two, just so that you know. So once again, just making sure that that is as even as I possibly can make it. So what are you guys in your family doing for Christmas? I hope that you have family that you can go and spend the holidays with. I think it makes a world of difference when we have loved ones to share our holiday with. So I really hope that you have that. my mom and my sister and my mother-in-law all within a few minutes one direction or the other of us if you know anything about Utah many of our communities are right along interstate 15 north and south and I have I have my sister and my mom living north of us and my mother-in-law living south of us so, lots of people to celebrate with. All right, so we are going to take each one of these little um, rolled pieces and we're going to frame the outer, the right and left side and the top of each of these. Not the bottom, just the right and left side and the top. Okay, so... I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and probably let me see if she goes over at all. It looks like she does the the top and then the sides come up to meet the top. So that's what we'll do. So I'm actually going to cut my pieces 
before I lay them down because I think it would be easiest. So we need a three and a half and then we need probably a piece that is not quite as far as long. Okay, so let's see if the precision point is what we want to use for adhering this on. I'm going to try it and we'll see. Okay, then we're, I'm just going to cut these at three and a half inches and that means we'll get three pieces from each one of these. So that means we can do eight windows and we have ten windows guys. So that means I'm going to need to roll a couple more. But for the in the interest of time, I am just going to go ahead and do the eight that I have. The eight pieces. And before I take the picture that um, I use for the cover sheet, I will do the other ones. So you can see all of them. And I'll put a note. Um, hopefully if you're watching this, you will have seen that I added a note to the video so that when you cut yours, you will cut 10. So you have enough for each of your windows, right? I'm going to try cutting more than one of these at a time just to speed things along a little bit. So three and a half. And three and a half. We went down to Salt Lake City not too long ago and watched the most incredible light show. These lights on this, these papers remind me of that. It was all set to music and went through our whole state fairground area and um, And it didn't matter at what point you started, you tuned your radio to a certain radio station and you could hear the music and the music, I don't know how they did it, but the music was programmed to follow the beats and the emphasis, or the lights were programmed to follow the beats and the emphasis in the music. It was really phenomenal. The lights changed and and were programmed so they would come on and off and change colors and it was really really awesome I don't know who put it together but it was very very impressive
you can talk, Emily. My daughter's <laughs> using sign language to me. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> My family never knows when I'm recording or not, so they come down here and, and make faces at me on the other side of my camera and stuff. <laughs> we, we need to get you a button that lights up. Yes. That says on air. It's something like that. <laughs> Recording. <laughs> something like that. Did you need me for something? Okay, hang on one second. Okay, my kids have been helping one of our friends, they've been being elves for her and delivering some goodies to people, which is fun. It's always fun to be the bearer of gifts, right? Especially this time of year. All right, so just cutting these every three and a half inches. It's just faster to cut two at a time, and and then glue them on. I'm liking it so far. What do you think? I'm wondering if you probably could use repositionable adhesive to put these things on, except that I don't know if repositionable adhesive would hold it well enough because um, sometimes, you know, the areas that you didn't put the adhesive, that I didn't put the adhesive, or I didn't put the adhesive strong enough or whatever are wanting to unfold so I'm having to add pressure to it. I would do as far as photos that are going to go into this um, or into these frames, I would use three inch fo square photos and um, and they'll they'll be perfectly framed because you'll they'll actually end up being double matted between the the mat the green mat and the um, the wood stick frame that we're adding, which will, I think, be really cute. When we're done, I will get some templates out and we'll take a look at what it looks like, what it potentially would look like with, um, with photos on it. Moving on to the next page. Let's go ahead and cut our strips.
While I'm at it, I'm just gonna do this last one too. There we go. So I know I have a few people that watch my channel right now that are in Canada I'm wondering do you guys do anything different with your lights in Canada than, um, than we do here in the States? Or, I know, I, so my family being a military family, my husband being in the service at one point um, of, and doing his career in the Army, we were stationed at one point um, over in Europe for a bit. So I know that Christmas lights are definitely a thing in Germany and Italy. Although one thing, one Christmas tradition that I found really cool and maybe it's just because I was brought up in Southern California so not in the, you know, Midwest or the um, East Coast at all, but a tradition that I love seeing that um, we sort of adopted, although we haven't done it as much since we've been here in, in Utah as I would have liked. Um, I love the areas of the world that add candles to their window sills or the you know the little the little battery or electric candles just a single candle on the windowsill of each window in the front of the house at Christmas time. I don't know, there's just something so warm and inviting about that. It's just, it's not, to me it's not fancy or, you know, pretentious in any way. It's just a beautiful, peaceful reminder of the light of the world in the season. So, I, I really like it when we're able to do that in our house. Add those lights to our those single, it's almost like it's a candle on the windowsill. I really think it's neat. Takes a couple seconds of holding thing, holding this down for it to grab hold and adhere. Okay, so there we've got our our wood frames. Pretend these two are done. Don't look at those for now. They'll be done by the time I take our picture. Okay, so now what we need to do is just grab these um, laser cut borders. And I'm going to use these to um, put across the bottom of our um, of each of our pictures okay so 
These are actually going to end up being just a little bit beyond three and a half because I want to have a little bit of extra room to kind of sculpt as I'm cutting because you'll notice that these are not they're not uh, the same right so we're going to just cut them so that they fit right about there and now you might be saying to yourself well I don't have enough of these to be able to make uh, one for each window it's true you're you would need at least three or four of these I fortunately bought two packages of um, of the laser embellishments or laser borders sorry um, so I have a few to play with and so I'm just going to um, utilize um, what I have so that means that I'm going to use these kind of in an every other one fashion, as you can see right there. Then I have this one, which is also really cool that I'm going to add here and there to, um, to kind of make up the difference. And I also have these, which I thought would be fun to add, but you don't need cardinals on every windowsill. So, we're, we'll figure it out as we go, but um, so I am just kind of just kind of cutting around a certain portion of the design, like so, so that we can add some jazz to our layout. There's um, different areas of the world also that this is something that they do regularly. They they um, decorate their homes with boughs on the windows. Do you live in an area that's like that? That does that? Not every area does that. But it is really cool when you do live in an area that does that. I have found it to be very, very pretty effect. this off a little bit closer. So I think what I'm going to do is use that there and that up there to just kind of spread some of this around. some cardinals in the corner up there. Hmm, we need something red there, so that's going to be a cardinal. There'll be a cardinal here, a group of cardinals there, 
see. Just have a single cardinal over there. Or we could do these two guys. Those two guys looking in that way. This guy looking over. Or maybe we can use him on one of our mats in the middle. All right. So when you adhere, oh, I also have this um, piece of laser border, which I think I'm going to put across the bottom here. But I'm going to think about that for just a minute. Okay, so the other element that we need to add are um, is a journal area and maybe a title area. Okay, so I have these mats that came with the mat pack, and I just thought that they were cool. So I w wanted to try to incorporate them in here somewhere. I need a mat that's going to go around them though, so I think I'm going to cut, I'm going to use our green paper that we used for this, and I'm going to cut a mat that will go around the outside of this. So this mat is one of our six and a half by four and a half mats. So that means I'm going to need a seven by five piece of this paper and I don't know if I have a seven by five inch piece of that I don't think I do actually so um, well hang on a second maybe I do but I'm just not seeing it so let's see five inches Okay, so I could do a 7 by 5 but I would only be able to do one because I, I've cut this side of my paper. So it probably would be a good idea to have these match. So I'm going to just go ahead and use one of my, um, or use my pieces that I cut from the back and we're going to um, mat our mats using this. So let's cut five inches. And five by, we said seven, right? Because it's a six and a half inch mat. So five by seven. We've got our two mats from one of the pieces that was in the uh, back. So we'll go ahead and mat our journal box. And I have a matching piece. Uh, it matches the border on the journal box, which is cool. And then I thought I would use probably the deck these halls and bless this mess. And the reason is because what I can use in each one of these photos are some small snapshots of the things that we use to decorate our home at the holidays, which um, are, it's fun to document that. If you haven't documented that in your home, I highly recommend it. Just go and take a picture of the things that mean the most to you. 
and then journal about it so that your family knows where things came from and why they're special. I think it's very important to um, to record that. So that's I, what I that's kind of my vision of what ought to, what you ought to use this page for. Of course, you can use it for whatever you want, but that would be my recommendation. All right, so I'm going to put this on here, and it will function, you know, kind of like a big family room window. So just sort of center it from right to left, according to your where your um, borders of your photos are. And then I've got it probably, let's see, that's about two inches from the bottom is where that sits. I'm just going to center this mat and it'll look like it's been double matted, which is very cool. Very fancy, right? If you have a big wide picture you want to put on there, you could do that instead of a mat. A 4 by 6 picture. Maybe you have a nativity that you want to add emphasis to. I think it would be totally fine to skip the, the mat and actually put um, put a beautiful photo of something, large photo of something that's special in your home there. All right, now as far as this particular piece goes, I'm going to cut this in half. Normally I would go ahead and glue it down and then cut it apart, um, but I'm not going to do that because we have the green border that's going all the way around and I don't want to have this overlap, that green border, so I'm going to actually adhere it separately. I'll show you what I mean. Give me a sec here. So I'm just going to use my repositionable adhesive so I can make sure that I um, have it in the right place. I can pull it up if I want to. I'm just sort of laying this as it stands right between two of the strands of lights. Um, didn't really plan on that, but... Hopefully you can still hear me. I had a sound that just went off and I don't know what that was. It's kind of strange. Okay, and I'm going to take our little, I'm going to grab my foam squares to adhere these little guys. Um, I'm going to recommend that you use your small foam squares and just put three small ones across the bottom. That way you can put your photos behind it, right? So just the three bit across the bottom and then put that all the way to the bottom or as far to the bottom as you can so that you have plenty of space to stick a photo behind there. Same thing with your bows. These are going to take a little bit more space. I would 
I would say because this is going to fall down into the next photo because it's a little bit wider I would say put this put put your uh, foam squares about midway on this one and then be careful when you stick it down that those foam squares are at the bottom of your mat that way you can stick your photo behind and underneath both ways right And I'm doing the same thing on this one. Just be careful that your garland or that your yeah, your garland doesn't stick off of the page itself over here. Getting there, we are almost done. Because we have so many boughs underneath all these windows, I really don't think it's necessary to do a whole lot of embellishing on this page or these pages. You can, of course, if you like, but um, I am. I think I may just adhere this last little cardinal that I have down here just because I don't know what else I'll use him on. And I hate for him to go to waste, right? So we'll probably use him and um, put him somewhere before we're done. Maybe we'll add him over near our journal box just to kind of... Um, jazz up that space just a little and you know what I ju it just occurred to me that I still have to put the um, wood around these two so I'm not going to adhere that one right just yet I want to be able to um, to do that without being hindered so not going to do that just yet but I am going to put this little this little extra cardinal on and I think I'm just going to have him right here at the corner of my journal box just happy all right I believe that concludes this layout ladies and gentlemen um What do you think? I think it looks like a cottage. This was a long one and I apologize for how long it takes to or took to put this together but hopefully it won't be as long when I speed up um, a couple of those areas or mainly where we were making these. 
All right. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me put this together and I hope that you will take the time to do something similar in your albums. I think that you will um, love it and I do, I do hope that you will record um, photographs of your precious things from this period of time. And until next time, I wish you many more creative moments. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day.